This is a quick overview of how to generate process design kits for photonic integrator circuits. So starting with a quick review of Lumerical's products. First we have FDTD Solutions. This, this is our 2D and 3D Maxwell's equation solver. It allows us to simulate the interaction of light with arbitrary 3D geometries. Most Solutions is a comprehensive waveguide design environment that's very useful for looking at devices that support guided modes, such as a waveguide or a fiber. We also have Device. This is our 2D and 3D Poisson and Drift Diffusion Solver, and it's very useful for simulating the electrical properties of devices, uh, such as an electro-optic modulator. So FDT Solutions, Most Solutions, and Device are what we call TCAT simulation tools. They use a fundamental physics-based equations, and they're able to give us very accurate results. So these tools are very suitable for doing component design, but they're not feasible for large circuits. Lumerical also has a photonic integrated circuit simulator. In this case, there's no limitation on the size of the circuit or systems that you want to simulate. So in order to simulate photonic integrated circuits accurately, what we want to do is to take the component level simulation results and then bring it into interconnect in the form of compact models that can be used and reused for different circuit designs. To do this, we need to map the physical geometry of the device, for example the width of a waveguide, to its compact model parameters such as a group index. And our approach is to use lookup tables. So on one side, we have the component level simulations or measurements. And on the other side, we have the circuit and system level simulations using those compact models. And here, the lookup table is really what ties these together and basically tells the compact models which component level results to use for the circuit level simulation. So let's look at how to create a compact model for an electro-optic modulator. So here we start by simulating the PN junction using device, and we have the waveguide at the center, as well as the N-type and the P-type doping regions that are shown as green boxes. So for this device, the physical parameters include both the waveguide dimensions as well as the doping regions. So I've set up a parameter sweep here that's going to loop through each physical geometry combination. So here you can see both the waveguide dimensions as well as the doping regions changing shape. And the carrier density distribution that results as a, from this device simulation is going to be automatically exported into mode solutions to calculate the optical response. So now here's the same waveguide in mode solutions. And you can see the voltage-dependent refractive index uh, for the waveguide. And now if I do the same parameter sweep, you can see that uh, the refractive index distribution is automatically changed based on the results from the previous device calculation. And after this is done, I will have the change in the effective index and loss as a function of voltage for each geometry combination. And then I can build a compact model for this modulator. This is a ring modulator circuit in the schematic layout editor in Interconnect. So here my ring modulator is composed of a modulator compact model, a coupler compact model, as well as a waveguide compact model. And this means that I can change any property of any of the components that I want. For example, I can change the waveguide dimensions, I can change the gap length between uh, the two waveguides of the coupler, and I can also change the size and the location of the doping regions in, in my modulator. For example, if I want to see how changing the coupler length will allow me to achieve a higher extinction ratio, all I have to do is set up a parameter sweep where I can loop through each coupler length and then plot the transmission as a result. So this is the gain as a function of my coupler length and wavelength. And this tells me that the optimal coupler length that I should use is at what, about 1.9 microns. And this is what's going to give me the highest extinction ratio. So another thing that I may want to do is to see how changing the center of my junction in my modulator is going to affect the modulation properties of this ring modulator. So I can also set up a parameter sweep to loop through each input voltage, and then I can plot the transmission at the modulation frequency. 
So here this shows that my ring modulator goes from about 0 to 0 0.25 transmission from 0 to 3.5 volts. So that, let's change the junction center to be at 100 nanometers to the left of the center of the waveguide. So all I have to do is change this in the circuit and rerun my parameter sweep. And now the parameter sweep will loop through one voltage at a time for the new junction design. And because this is a circuit level simulation, it's much faster than the TCAT simulations, and I can get the circuit level response instantly. And once this is done, I can plot the new transmission at modulation frequency. And here you can see that by changing the center of the junction, it leads to a very significant change in my modulation response for my ring. And with these compact models, it's very easy to create circuits with arbitrary complexity using interconnect. And since adding more elements in compact models to a circuit does not actually require more TCAT simulations, this makes this approach very scalable with increasing circuit complexity. For a full presentation and video, please visit the following link on our website. Please also feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn to access information on our products, services, and upcoming webinars.